Welcome to XCOM Splice Strategies. Today's mission takes us to the exotic location of San Francisco, California, where we're saving the executives of Google so that they'll give us their engineers. We start off the mission aimed to impress as we're just going to jump out of the plane. No need for landing here. We're now an enemy within territory. We're hardcore now. And how did Beetleberg keep his hat on as he jumped, you ask? Well, the answer is quite simple, actually. Science. So the aliens here are attacking the San Francisco laundromat. It's well documented that greys are militant nudists and are trying to force their way of life upon us. But we're not going to give in to them, no siree. We at XCOM are going to keep our pants on and keep fighting on. That is a splice strategy is guarantee. So, what's our plan? I'm going to use the concealment and high cover of this building and go to the left, trying to get into this alleyway. We will use our sniper, Jimmy, to hold this back line in case we get flanked. Now, as we move to this left side, we see a meld canister, but it's out in the middle of the alleyway. It could be bait for us to trigger an alien patrol. So, instead of sending everyone out there all at once, we take our time and move in patiently. Once we're set up, we move Citrus Architect in, where he'll have full cover no matter where the aliens appear from. Luckily for Citrus, no aliens in this part of the alleyway. So he collects the meld, and we gotta decide what to do. With no aliens here, I'm pretty convinced that the aliens are just on the other side of this door here. So we gotta set up for every contingency possible. Citrus Architect is already perfectly positioned to fire in the doorway. We've got Jimmy completely on the other side of the laundry mat if they run that direction. I move Eva Lemison up to the roof, so that if they decide to attack one way or the other, she can help either direction. And then I move Beetober to open the door and spring the trap. Man, it would have been really embarrassing for me if those greys hadn't been there. But not as embarrassing as it is for this alien, as Citrus Architect puts a couple bullets in his bare bottle, face down and naked on a dirty laundromat floor. That's definitely not the way you want to go out. Regardless, his buddy decides to come back and mourn over his body, rather than shoot or go into Overwatch. I know he's probably uttering oaths of divine, unclad vengeance against us appareled heathens, but, uh, you know, I really think shooting us would have been a better ploy, as now we get to pick how we're going to kill him. And our choice is to let Eva Lemison get the kill. This way, we can guarantee she gets a promotion, too. So she simply jumps off this two-story roof, shatters her shins, moves into the laundromat, and serves up the harshest public nudity citation ever. <laughs> and what the tide was up with that bullet's path of travel? I mean, look at that! The little gunman's bullet could pull this off. Evil Lemison's dark magic shooting gallery aside, that's two problems down. My next decision, though, isn't my best one. I decide to go with the time-honored strategic theory of noted military genius Fred from Mystery Inc., and I split the gang up. Now, the basic idea behind this strategy isn't terrible. The plan is simply let either side advance until they find a group of aliens, and then let the other team flank from the other side. But in order to execute it properly, you have to move one side forward, leaving the other team's actions available in case they run into something. But in this case, I move Beetleburn and Emisan up. Then, like a moron, I move Jimmy up. So now Jimmy has found two more aliens that want to deprive us of our freedom, hit points, and clothes. We're treated to this wonderful image of a gray, naked, bulbous-headed alien shimmying up a pipe, slowly. Ugh. And because we've already used up Evil Emison and Beetober's movements, we can't reorient them towards the alien threat there. And just when you think it can't be any more fun than letting the aliens get the high ground, look who decides to show up. And look who decides to miss. It's now a 4v4 fight, and, as we've said before, even odds is a sucker's game. Now, in a situation like this, one could panic, but that is a poor strategy. You gotta think, what's the biggest threat, and how can I get rid of it? The biggest threat is the alien that went inside that door and could flank us next turn. Fortunately for us, where he went, Beetober can get to and probably get a flanking shot. <laughs> oh, and there he is, just right there in the comic section. Needed to move a little further, but got distracted by all the shiny new comic book covers. Don't worry, little naked alien. It gets a lot of us. Only, you know, when I get distracted by comics, I don't get killed by Beetleburg. With that sectoid dead, I want to get Evil Emison to the roof. 
We already know one sectoid's up there, and I'm pretty confident the other sectoid that was in the alleyway is going to be making a beeline for the high ground too. This sets her up well next turn to support Jimmy and Citrus Architect. Speaking of, we still have an alien here behind hardcover. And the best solution to hardcover is hard explosives. Now Citrus Architect really isn't in a spot to give any help, but I want to move him up. But the alien on the roof is likely an overwatch. I decide to take a little bit of a risk. I decide to move Citrus Architect up, but to limit the chances of the alien hitting him, use Dash to run past the alien fire. Luckily for us, it works out. So the high ground gray decides, eh, I don't really want this, uh, this high ground. You guys can have it. We'll just, uh, we'll just take this low ground hardcover. Okay, whatever. That's his choice. But he's not the only one making dubious choices. I myself forget one of the biggest rules of any Iron Man run. The rule is that you don't let a soldier take his second action before every other soldier has taken their first. Now, there might be some situations where it's more beneficial to let one soldier completely take their entire turn before the other ones. But in general, this is the best rule. And so the fact that I move Beedober up and then move him again is a bad thing. Especially when he starts taking overwatch shots from an alien I assumed was on the roof. And as we know, if you assume you know what the aliens are doing, you're probably going to end up digging graves or flossing plasma from between your teeth. For the aliens' turns, they decide to do a much simpler strategy. The alien out front, probably frustrated that he missed Citrus Architect when he was out in the open, tries to shoot him when he's behind cover. It doesn't work out. For him, works out great for us. Back in the alleyway, I had hoped putting Emison on the roof in Overwatch would stop any alien advancing on Beedober. No dice. And Beedober pays the price. Luckily for all involved, Beedober only takes minimum damage and his hat is untouched. With both aliens having shot, it's now safe to advance. And that's music to Beedober's ears because he's hungry for vengeance. Huh, I just noticed the, uh, the, the meld was expired this time. Looks like we're only bringing 10 meld back today. Back at the front, I take a stupid risk. I find Sniper to be a great class, but not until they get their second promotion. For that reason, I really want Jimmy to get this last kill. Citrus Architect has a grenade, which means we have control. I could just have Jimmy shoot, take a long shot at the fact that she's probably not going to hit a 35% shot, and then just use Citrus Architect if she misses to take out the last gray. I create a potentially much more dangerous situation by using Citrus Architect's precise grenade to blow away the alien's cover and then have Jimmy shoot. I want to freeze the frame here because I feel this is an important lesson for all you first-time XCOMers. XCOMies? XCommunists. I like this. Anyway, I want you to note Jimmy's odd to hit. 75%. That, that's pretty good. But that means there's a 1 in 4 chance that she misses. If she misses, all this alien has to do is walk up a little bit and Citrus Architect is completely exposed. If this little scheme had netted me, say, a 95 plus percent shot chance, then we really wouldn't be questioning it. But we have a 1 in 4 shot of missing. That's a 1 in 4 shot of leaving Citrus Architect completely exposed to this exposed alien. I highly advise you that if you're in a similar situation, do not do this. Now, having said all that, Let's watch Jimmy drill this alien in the head and split it open like a Gallagher watermelon. And with that, Operation Reptilian Conversation is complete. When we came to San Francisco, we may not have put a flower in our hair, but we sure as heck killed some aliens. That joke's only funny if you know the song San Francisco. It's a 1967 hit by Scott McKenzie. It's, it's basically all about how like everyone in San Francisco Imagine were hippies back in the day. And I just used it as a punchline about, you know, murdering aliens. I'm pretty sure I was heading somewhere with this. Ah oh, yes, promotions. Evil Emison and Citrus Architect decide to steal from one another. Both will always claim that the other one came up with it first and the other one copied it. Either way, they both are in assault now. On the downside, Beedober is going to be spending nine days in the ER. Something about plasma wounds. That means our next mission is likely going to be Sans, DJ Sucre, and Beedober. What is up with my male soldiers and getting injured? Jeez Louise, it's like they think they're invincible. Definitely don't blame their commander, it's not his fault. Another thing we get from this mission is a medal. Medals are a new mechanic in Enemy Within. You get them for completing certain mission types. You award medals to soldiers for permanent bonuses. Each medal can confer one of two bonuses, though you have to select what that bonus will be upon getting your first medal. In this case, the first thing I do is rename this medal 
the Cherno Alpha badge because I have Pacific Rim on the brain, and then we choose which bonus I'll get. I have the choice between plus 5 defense wall and cover, or plus 5 to aim when shooting an enemy behind full cover. My personal feeling is you should always be fighting behind cover yourself. You should not be shooting at aliens that are behind full cover. If that's the case, you've already done something wrong. So, I feel the obvious choice is to get plus 5 defense wall and cover. As for who I reward it to, I have a bad history of getting my assaults killed. I overextend them a lot and don't give them enough defense. So this is a good way to give an assault some defense. So I award it to Evil Emison. And doesn't Evil Emison just look so adorable in her formal attire? Aww. Next thing we do is customize the newly designated 08 Citrus Architect. And with a name like Citrus Architect, you're gonna be orange. Plus I give him a hat that's backwards just to let the aliens know that he means business, but that he's also kind of a cool guy. I really wish there was some way that I could just, in the middle of the mission, flip the cap from backwards to forwards and vice versa. It'd be awesome for him to have the cap forwards and then someone dies, and then, boom, totally flipping the cap backwards just to let the aliens know, oh yeah, you're in trouble now. Tangents aside, it's time to scan for trouble. While we're scanning, our excavation completes, and so we start excavating some more. Then it's back to scanning, and it's really not that long before we have a bogey that's basically at longitude zero, latitude zero. Let's send in our best fighters to take down this invading menace. Good luck! All right, all right, enough of that. Man, I had way too much fun editing that clip. I apologize if you didn't find that funny or didn't get the reference. That said, I don't regret anything. The fly jockeys have created a mess, and it's time to send in the mop-up crew. And I have a somewhat of a difficult decision to make. Right now, my heavy and my support, 01 DJ Sucre and 03 Beetober respectively, are both in the medical bay. I could bring both of my assaults on this, Citrus Architect and Evil Emmy Sun, but this could be an opportunity if I bring along rookies to get them promoted and have backups at other positions other than assault. Ultimately though, these missions can go pear-shaped real quick, we've already seen this happen before, and so I just want to go in with the biggest guns I've got. That said, I will give Citrus Architect a regular rifle, and Evil Emison will hold a shotgun. This way, I'm not too dependent upon only close-range combat. With that decision made, it's now time to bring along our mystery rookie. Say hello to Gemini Spark of South Africa. May this young man's aim be true, his health bar full, and his bullets carry death on their wings. Let us also please note that before we get heading now, I forgot to equip anyone with a med pack. Spectacular. I mean, no, we totally intended for that. Uh, this is this is gonna be a no damage run that we're doing here. Strike totally one. okay, Prepare meant to do it. So we pile the team into the minivan for our long Thanksgiving trip on Operation Barrel Cake. Mmm. I don't know what a barrel cake is, but it sounds like a giant funnel cake, and now I kind of want someone to make the barrel cake idea happen. Speaking of poor health decisions, have fun stuffing your faces full of turkey, and then next Tuesday. When you awaken from your tryptophan-induced comas, I hope you watch another episode of Splice Strategies. Until then, I'm Splice, and I'm thankful for hardcover. What are you thankful for?